Lamau. Bye bye then. XD. I love this game. Only true Battlefield players would still play this game. Plus, there was a new update. <laughs> Yeah. You'll make another video shortly about how you were wrong and things are improving. Don't worry, it's what all you YouTubers do to get clicks. And you will continue to play it on the low. No, you're right about one thing. I am going to talk about this game once again, but I sure as hell ain't giving it any praise, I'll tell you that. Because when I made that video, I meant every word. I actually refunded the game. You won't find it in my Steam library, because out of all the battlefields that I played, this is the first one that actually didn't feel like a battlefield game. And I've actually played pretty much every battlefield except for Battlefield 2. I actually did have that game, but I never got around to actually playing it. And at some point, I kind of just lost the copy, so yeah. The reason why why I say that this game doesn't feel like a Battlefield was because of what the developers actually said themselves. Battlefield 2042 was supposed to be a battle royale and the Battlefield part of the game was straight up an afterthought and it really shows because if you were to play that watered down battle royale part of the game Hazard Zone if you could actually get into a game you'd actually notice a difference in performance between the battle royale and the Battlefield part of the game. Not saying that it's perfect because it wasn't that part of the game was also riddled with bugs but there's a noticeable difference in optimization. Now I guess you could argue that that mode didn't feature a whole lot of players, but I was hearing that when people heard that it was just going to be a battle royale, they were actually scrambling to try to fix up the whole battlefield part of the game. That makes more sense to me because all of the maps are basically unbalanced. The objectives didn't make any freaking sense. There's like way too many open areas, not enough cover. This is probably the battlefield with the least destructible environments in recent years. Even with 120 something players, the map still felt pretty big. I found myself running from one objective to another only to get the previous one capped so yeah the maps are just a mess and recently they said that they were going to fix it but as far as i can tell like the game they hardly put any effort in actually trying to fix it or make it a game worth going back to they literally did like the bare minimum oh you want cover there okay we'll just add a couple of crates here there you go they literally put crates in areas that make no freaking sense to have crates there it's just just dumb. They removed the tried and true class system and replaced it with the specialist system, which I hated it when I read it on paper, and I hated it in action. There's nothing special about this specialist system, unironically. The only thing that's supposedly unique about them is the gadgets that they get, but really, the gadgets aren't really game changers. Like, sure, they might help you out a little bit, get you to the top of a building, or make it so that you could fly around the map, but aside from that, it's more of a gimmick than an actual feature. Like, it's somehow supposed to make us feel unique, but playing with them on the battlefield it you just see like multiple of the same freaking character and what's worse is that you can't actually tell who's on the enemy team because they literally all look the same they didn't bother to change the color of the other team you know it would be one thing if the game was like a five versus five then you could say that oh okay these characters are kind of unique but this is 120 something players and everybody just chooses freaking mckay everybody just looks the same and i could give a shit about their backstories i really don't care god this just makes me miss the older battlefields where everything actually did feel unique and the specialists are basically more of a negative than they are a positive because they really took away a lot of that teamwork i mean sure they sort of fixed it later on but again teamwork wasn't really the focus of this game they were trying to make this game more of a battle royale which isn't team focused well usually there are some modes where you can actually play with teams but battlefield isn't supposed to be that type of game like this battlefield is definitely just a trend follower and it really shouldn't be a trend follower it should be the game that's supposed to be setting trends but instead took the easy route and didn't even do a good job with it. How is it that this game got more time in the oven and yet still had less content than the previous Battlefield? Like the base game only had like 7 maps and 22 weapons which is just ridiculously tiny. Not enough to even keep people for like a month or two. I'm not gonna even count Hazard Zone because it's a freaking joke. And Portal should have been its own thing. There wasn't a whole lot of content in Portal and honestly the upgrades were cool but they were plagued by all the same bugs that were featured in the main game and people just kept using the servers as xp farms instead of just games the portal mode definitely felt better than battlefield 2042 because it featured pieces from much better battlefield games but why would i play portal when i could just go back to the previous games sure the graphics are a downgrade but there's just much more content to keep you around than the actual base game of 2042 the game was missing like very basic features like a scoreboard or voip this is when the developers really insulted our intelligence trying to tell us that scoreboards and voip are legacy features 
features. Oh, far be it from me to think that such a basic feature could somehow be a legacy feature. These developers really want us to believe that a feature that's existed since like the early 2000s, maybe even late 1990s, is somehow a unique idea that, they, <laughs> that they're actually trying to advertise to us. You can't make this shit up. They actually have this plastered all over their media. Like, hey guys, we finally brought in the scoreboard and the VoIP. Whoa, cool. We fixed over 400 bugs. Oh my God, you guys. Like this is literally stuff that should have been day one, not six months out. I genuinely don't know why they are receiving praise for this. I mean, I don't even know if I want to call it an update. It's more of a patch than an update. Like the season one content was supposed to come out like I think a month or two ago and they ended up delaying it. And from what I've heard, the season one update wasn't even supposed to be that big. I think it was supposed to be like maybe two maps and a gun or something and they ended up delaying it. So whoopee, six months out and you only get a patch, not a content update. I actually had a fight with someone on Twitter about this and at some point in the conversation he had said something that I noticed a lot of people who bought 2042 always say, it gets better. Don't you remember Battlefield 4? It was Bug City and then they fixed it. Things got better. Well, here's why this argument doesn't work. You can't compare Battlefield 4 to 2042 because Battlefield 4 had far more basic features that these devs call legacy features, more guns, maps, customization, progression, a tried and true class system, destructible environments, balanced vehicles, better performance. I could go on and on, but the point is, Battlefield 4 is a far superior game to 2042 because it had big base content and actual progression that would last you more than just a month. There was a reason to go back to Battlefield 4, and I can't really say the same for 2042. Imagine comparing barely 20 weapons to a little over 80. I just don't get the argument. Now listen, I'm not here to try and discourage you from buying this game, but what I am saying is that the game doesn't do enough to earn your money. It would be one thing if this game was made by an indie studio, but this game is a triple A studio. These guys literally have the manpower, the money, the resources, the infrastructure to give us a battlefield that we all want, but they are refusing to do so. If there's anything that this battlefield showed, it's that either they got people to work on a game that wasn't supposed to be a battlefield game, or the people that were working on it just had a sheer lack of talent because they completely failed to give us the battlefield experience that we all wanted and lied to us several times actually. So this game, Battlefield 2042, is dead to me. I will not drop a dime on this game, even if they decide to add more stuff to it at some point. They would have to pay me to play this game, but seeing as hell, that's probably not gonna happen. I thought that I would talk to you about two other games that are more Battlefield-like experiences than Battlefield 2042. You can get these games at a much cheaper price with far more bang for your buck than 2042. Now, these two games that I'm about to mention have their own issues, which I will definitely make in their own separate videos showing their pros and cons, but they're by far and away much better Battlefield experiences than 2042 in my opinion. So the first one that I want to talk about is a game that actually failed back in 2018, but somehow sprung back to life to become a much better game than it was back then. Yes, this comeback story of a game is known as World War 3. World War 3 is a tactical online multiplayer FPS where the world is your battleground. Outgun the enemy in thrilling team-based skirmishes with a huge arsenal of weapons, vehicles, gadgets, and drones at your disposal. This is a game that I highly recommend because it's actually a game that's worth your time and if you're someone that's light in the pockets it's actually going to be free to play it's not currently out right now but if you actually do want to play the game you can play it for the low low cost of just $15 $15 for a ridiculous amount of content what's out now isn't everything that they're going to have on launch on launch they're going to give us quite a bit of stuff hopefully but at the moment there's quite a bit to do in the game the gunplay and gameplay is great and what complements it is the progression oh the progression i really feel rewarded after every match that i play unlike in games like Halo Infinite where I get like maybe 20 to 30 kills and it means absolutely nothing unless you're actually doing challenges. World War 3 doesn't do that to you. If you get a bunch of kills, play the objectives and actually be a team player, you receive XP towards your weapons and customization. That's how it should be and none of this specialist crap. I will definitely be getting into World War 3 in an upcoming video but for now let's move on to the next one. This next one came to me as an absolute shock. This game has no right being this good in gunplay and gameplay. If you want the ultimate non-battle Battlefield Battlefield experience, then this just might be the game for you. The game that I'm talking about is Battlebit Remastered. Battlebit Remastered is a low poly FPS that aims for a massively multiplayer experience with up to 254 players in a single server. Fight on large battlefield with ground vehicles, boats, and air support. Create your own strategies to win a nearly fully destructible map. Now listen, if you're looking at this game from just 
the footage that I'm showing you, and you're probably thinking, oh, this kind of just looks like a kitty game. Well, looks can be deceiving. Sure, this game doesn't look good, but oh my god, it feels so good. Like, you have to play it to understand how good this game is. And just the sheer amount of content that this game gives you is insane. Now, it's not perfect, but oh my god, this is honestly the closest to a good Battlefield experience that I felt in a very long time. I'm definitely going to be making a video on this, because it's not perfect, but oh, oh, I like it a lot. While the game gives up on looks, it makes up for it in its sheer amount of extraordinary content and quality of the gameplay and gunplay, progression, the amount of ways that you can customize your weapons, ah, all for the low, low price of just $15. This is an immediate buy. The price isn't final, but even if they put it up to like $20 or $30, I would recommend this over 2042 any day of the week. So yeah, these are the two games that I recommend. If you're someone that's a little more into realistic stuff, then get World War 3. If you're someone that doesn't mind the blocky look, but is more into the content of the product, then for sure, get Battlebit. If you want my opinion on which one you should get, well, in my personal opinion, I'm someone who loves supporting indie games that put a lot of effort into their games, so I suggest that you just get both. They're both pretty cheap, and have a ridiculous amount of content, and fantastic gameplay. They're not perfect and I'll definitely get into their own videos about that. But again, they're far and away better game than 2042. Two games that are definitely more bang for your buck. You do what you want with your money. This is just my opinion. And with that all being said, I think I'm probably gonna just end the video right here, right now. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like how many games did I do in this video? 2042, World War 3, and Battle Bear Remastered, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon or click on that join button that's underneath the video. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that that you could get more content on these types of games or any other game that I decide to cover. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.